Hi everybody, Andrew Cuneo here. Today is the new batch of alchemy cards related to Phyrexia. And there didn't seem to be all that much that was particularly exciting in this batch of alchemy cards, with the one exception of Spawning Pod. So this is kind of a callback to Birthing Pod, which was a pretty good card in Modern a long time ago. It's, it's banned in Modern right now, although I th think if it was legal it still wouldn't even be played the formats kind of passed it by this is a little bit different from birthing pod in that you don't get to pick the creature you get you you seek a creature that has a casting cost one more than the creature you sacked so you have two choices with this you can either build your deck in a way that it's deterministic or you can just put a variety of things in your deck where you'd be happy to get any of them the way I built this deck is that it's deterministic at six and seven. I get the Hourglass Covenant or Titan of Industry, but at the other casting costs, it's a little random. You know, if I'm getting, I'm gonna get one of two different four drops, I'm gonna get one of diff two different five drops. Uh, same with the threes and the twos. It, there's probably ways, at least in Historic, that you can build a combo deck with this card. I didn't see a way to do it in just straight up alchemy. And I think this, maybe this card's good enough for Historic, I don't know. I've included a bunch of alchemy cards in my deck just for the chance to play with them. Um, Hourglass Coven, which if you played whatever this Forgotten Realms, was that the name of this draft set? This was like the most miserable rare to play against. People play it sometimes if you play Alchemy Constructed. It's a pretty good card. It's like three creatures for, it's three bodies for one, basically. Um, Hollowhenge Wrangler, this is a pretty weird card. So when it enters the battlefield, you seek a land card, so it's kind of a two-for-one inherently. And then you can discard a land card to just get Hollowhenge Beasts into your hand. Um, and you can do this even though it's in the graveyard. So the reason I'm playing with this is that it means that if I if once I pod this out, I'm never going to flood out on lands. Like even if I kill my Hollowhenge Wrangler, I can just convert up the land I got into a beast and then pod the beast into the Hourglass Coven, which... That might be kind of nice. Um, two Junjis. This is... It, usually if you're playing a value pod deck, you want your creatures to either do something when they enter the battlefield or when they die. So this here is the dies trigger I'm taking advantage of. Um, Nantuko Slicer is kind of like an Eternal Witness that you're not going to be able to kick it off of getting it from pod, but you'll, you'll still get a card back from your graveyard into your hand if you pot into it. If you happen to draw it, you can kick it and you can get a card from your opponent's graveyard into your hand as well. Uh, City Stalker kind of sort of just has a real good comes into play ability, so it's good to pot into. Glissa does not have any sort of pod specific synergies. It's just a generally good three mana card. I've got this beside you Pathlighter, which is a value card. It gives you all, it, the spell book is just all lands which is kind of nice. I'm not sure if it's better than the three mana 4-4 four, four that get, gets a land into play but can't attack or block for a while. I forget the name of that card. It's a standard legal card. I wanted to play with this just because it's an alchemy card. Then I've got this other alchemy only card, which I think is going to be really good in a pod deck. So the, it's got this unblockability thing that doesn't really matter. Then it has, when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control perpetually gain. When this creature dies, you may shuffle it into the owner's library if it's in your graveyard, if you do investigate. So I can pod things away, but they go back into my deck, or if something dies, it goes back into my deck. So I'm not going to run out of pod targets in a longer game if my opponent's killing a lot of my stuff. And I'm going to get to investigate, which means you're getting clues, so you're not going to run out of cards. So that both of those are pretty cool. I think that's going to have pretty good synergy with Spawning Pod. Uh, the lands, there's Forsaken Crossroads, which if you haven't played much alchemy, this is... Uh, it's an alchemy-only land that pretty much goes in every two or three color alchemy deck. I have one Mycosynth Gardens, which the only artifact I can copy is Spawning Pod, but 
like one spawning pod is good. Two spawning pods, I think I'm going to run away with the game very quickly. So this is a way to get up to two spawning pods. My sideboard doesn't have anything all that exciting. I've got a Cityscape Leveler in case I want to have an 8 drop. The Leveler, it doesn't have an ETB trigger, which is why it's not in my main deck. You have to either cast it from your hand to get the trigger or attack with it. So you can pot into it and then attack with it the next turn, but it's not... It, it would be much better if it just had an ETB trigger rather than the cast trigger for the purposes of this deck. Uh, some duresses and random removal spells. Viconia is an anti-graveyard card. I also have unlicensed sources. I probably have way too much anti-graveyard stuff. But I like playing both of these cards. And then I've got Chihiro, which is an anti-enchantment card. When you specialize it, you blow up artifacts and enchantments. I wonder what the what's the black mode on it. Each opponent loses three life. And then I've got a couple copies of the Meat Hook Massacre. This is a nerfed form of the Meat Hook Massacre. Rather than being banned like it is in standard, it uh, just doesn't gain you life. But it'll still be a good card if I play against somebody who's just playing a bunch of small creatures. All right, let's give this deck a try. I don't have a spawning pod. I can scry towards one, though. I do have an antique collector. You're not a spawning pod. The new feature for favoriting lands is live. I favorited this swamp. I just picked it random. I think this is a pretty good swamp, though. I have no idea what set it's from. So this can only blow up enchantments, but I can remove the counters from... the uh, bank buster. I'm willing to trade my antique collector. To get a card from the spell book. I, I think this is worth it though, because it means they're not gonna be able to just chump the glissa. All right, I lied, they just chumped the glissa. Now they get a card from the spellbook. I don't think this thing's spellbook is that great. Just a bunch of enchantments. And I've got the Glissa in play already, hammering away at the enchantments. I should have not played a land before I attacked, just because... This thing gets a bunch of lands, and some of them come into play tapped. I guess I'll just take Bonder's Enclave. This is for when I have the Titan of Industry in play, I'll be able to start drawing cards. Take that action. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna play Glissa and crack my clue. And we'll wait to see if I wanna slice something better back. I certainly don't want to depopulate. I think this is the card they got off of the disciple. Hopefully they don't have the Wandering Emperor. My hopes were dashed. Crushed even. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. My judgment is final. Did you put it discards a card? That sounds pretty good. Ward, pay two life, no thank you. When it loses two life and you gain two life. I think we might discard a card. And this anti-graveyard mode.
wonder if they have the Eternal Wanderer. It would be a little bit annoying if they did. Does this thing count as a planes? Oh, it is a planes. Interesting. This card was so good in Streets of New Capenna, limited with alchemy cards when it was legal. Discard a card, please. They have Zell, the Githraki warrior, in their deck. Definitely want the Wandering Emperor to die, so I'm going to send two things at it. See you later. I don't think I want to play any of my heavy hitter cards. So I think instead I'm just gonna I'm gonna play this Nantuko Slicer. Get their Wandering Emperor and I guess a Glissa for me. A little bit concerned that they might have a card like Farewell in their hand. So don't want to commit a ton of additional stuff to the board. I know people really don't like alchemy very much, but I actually think it's kind of fun when you can do stuff like Slicer and you get the Wandering Emperor in your hand in a green-black deck or playing with all these spell book cards. I think there, there's a lot of aspects of alchemy that are actually pretty fun. I think that, the, for me, the huge letdown on alchemy is that they just have not put enough effort into rebalancing cards. Like, I was expecting we would be seeing rebalances every couple weeks, and that I, it's been months, I think, since they've rebalanced anything. They certainly haven't touched any cards that were just regular standard cards in a long time, because I think they concluded that people really just don't like it when they do that, which is unfortunate, because I think that was the... That was the only way it was ever going to be successful, was if they were... Uh, willing to actually rebalance cards. So the card I'm worried most about them having is Farewell. I've learned much they don't appear to have Farewell, though. Let me show you. They're going to exile the one that makes me discard, I would assume. I am almost sad to see you go. Or makes them discard, rather. I think if they had Farewell in their hand, they would have played it by now. So I'm going to take out the Celestial Vault. I guess I'll just make a 4-4 as well. The Eternal Wanderer is a good card, but it's not really a very good card if you don't have a board. Like you, you need to have a creature in play when you do the minus ability, or it's really kind of lackluster. Oh, 
Others need my help. I got a backup Eternal Wanderer. This thing makes... Urgiltron. Conjure cards named Power Plant. Tower into your library, and when it attacks or dies, seek one of them. Not that scary. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. Remember your training. So my plan was to make my guys into four fours and use Bonders Enclave, but I think I no longer need I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna play Titan of Industry. Blow up Urza's construction drone. I actually gained a decent amount of life from authority of the consoles, it's still probably... Well, it wouldn't have been worth an actual card. They got it for free off of the Faith's Disciple, which traded for my Antique Collector, although I got a clue from the Collector, so I kind of came out ahead on the exchange. I think it was better to have a clue than have authority of the consoles. Wow. That's the power plant they got off the construction drone. Or maybe they drew it for their turn. <laughs> I drew the Hollow Henge Wrangler. Nice. Wrangled up a Hollow Henge Wrangler. This is lethal if they have nothing. If they have another wandering emperor. It's not lethal. Another Iganjo. Iganjo number two to stay alive. Do you have a sweeper opponent? They probably are not playing with actual sweepers in their deck if they're playing all these Eternal Wanderers. I stand corrected. They have Farewell. Interesting. Hold spawning pod in my hand. I can't pod the Wrangler into an hourglass coven. I, I also don't have any seven drops left in my deck. Oh, 
I thought they were going to go after the Wrangler. That's bad. I should have beside you the ossification with the trigger on the stack. Or am I still the owner of this? I think I am the owner of this. So I can actually beside you it. It's not their card. The, the way some of these things work with uh, alchemy cards is confusing. I believe that this Wandering Emperor is going to come into play on my side. No! I needed my Hollow Henge Wrangler to survive so I can get some beasts so I can make an hourglass coven. You can just do this whenever you want, right? This card to land, get Hollow Henge Beast. Nice deal. I want to discard beside you because I'm not I'm not gonna have enough mana to use the beside you this turn I'd rather it was in my graveyard so that if I find my other Nantuko guy I can get the beside you back if I want it I don't have any one drops in my deck, so I can't pod the uh, tokens into one drops and then go up a chain. I don't know that making all those one ones is actually going to be all that good when they've got authority of the consoles. My other options were not good either. It's the Midnight Sky. Found a backup beside you. I was actually hoping that I was going to hit the City Stalker kind of sore there. Well, this is in play, right? These games against this mono white deck, they always feel like they last forever. I feel like I'm winning most of the time, but they just never die.
Let me block one of them. They block one of them and they have the Wandering Emperor. They live here. So instead, I'm going to beside you the ossification in combat. Take a hollow henge beast, please. One hollow henge beast for me, please. This is what you get for hurting my people. I'm gonna let the hourglass come and die, I think. And I can I could pod my Junji away. The Hourglass Coven is not a dragon. That would make this play really bad because I don't have anything left to find. game has been going on forever. We've both been playing pretty fast. Pot doesn't seem that powerful, but I think it's because I drew it so late in the game that I, and I already had all the seven drops out of my deck, and I never drew an antique collector to make my stuff recyclable. Well, now I drew one. I have conjured two hollow hinge beasts, though. That's pretty impressive. You have to admit that it's pretty impressive. Why, why does it say all of my cards are new? They aren't new. I've had all these cards for a while. None of them are new. Alright, this seems like a good matchup for Cityscape Leveler. Seems like a horrible matchup for Cut Down. Seems like a pretty good matchup for Jahira. We played for a long time and I never saw... A wedding announcement out of their deck. I think I'm going to trim some of these go for the throats and one scrap gorger and like play two duresses. I don't think they had cards like Sanctuary Warden in their deck either. This is not enough lands. Yeah, I guess I should mulligan. I can scry. Then if I found a second land, I can play my Antique Collector. Not that that's really that great. 
The only thing that was tempting about that hand is I do have pod in it to start. The Sin probably is actually less likely to win than the hand I mulliganed. Urs is Silex, interesting. So pretty light on lands. They need six mana to use this to, to go and get a Planeswalker. It's a little bit pricey. Should I just play the Hourglass Coven and hope they don't have a fourth land? That is certainly not a great plan, but it might be the best plan I've got. They already bricked on a land once. If I get uh, the thing that makes them discard, they're not going to be able to just wait to draw a land. They might just fateful, fateful absence here. No. They're banking on the land. Brick, brick, brick. Some of their lands come into play tapped, like that one. Tapped land, nice. Vanquish the Horde, not nice. If we were making a list of things I enjoyed, that wouldn't be on it. I should have said green. This doesn't really matter. I think I'm Takanuming back an hourglass coven anyway. sorcery speed. I've been playing assuming it is sorcery speed, but I might be wrong. It is sorcery speed. That was a good draw. I will not be denied having the Hourglass Coven in play. Now I just need to draw a pod. No! Creating the 4-4 doesn't do very much because they can just plus on it. I actually think I'm probably not going to be able to get this off the board. So if they minus here, shield doesn't protect me, I don't think. Yeah. 
The shield protects me from fateful absence, but that's it. I don't think I can win this game. Maybe what I needed to do is Jahira the Silex, but had I done that, the Hourglass Coven still would have gotten farewelled. Maybe I can get something going with spawning pod. Come on, beside you, blight lighter, whatever it's called. Beside you, path lighter. All right, now let's find a good land. Good land for me, please. An actual beside you. Doesn't all that much right now. I might just want the option to get a card. It'd be crazy if I come back to win this game. I still think I'm losing. I feel a little bit better now that I know that their most expensive card in their hand can cost three. Also, does this card even do anything ever? Can it always block? Okay, it can always block. So it does a little. We can win this together. Come on, Junji. 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 Hollow Hinge Wrangler. You're not Junji. Beast coming up. This would be one of those games where if I had a Mycosynth Gardens to make a second pot, it would actually be pretty good. So next turn they can start attacking me. They've ossified my hollow hinge wrangler. Rude. I'm gonna call rude on that one. Show them the edge of your blade.
I can't do the trigger. I can't do this while the trigger's on the stack. Uh, I thought I was going to be able to discard a land to it. Oh, it's in the graveyard. I guess it's not a trigger. No, it is a trigger, but it's a, re it's a replacement effect. So I suppose that makes sense. Can this thing finally attack? It can't. Finally. Took a while to get warmed up. Junji, please. Maybe I was supposed to be attacking sooner with the Glissa. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna put the enchantment on me. That'll be fun. Sinner's judgment. Farewell. Oh wait, they're not exiling graveyards. I guess that doesn't matter that much. Show them the edge of your blade. in their upkeep. It's been a pretty epic match. It hasn't been short.
What's under this thing? A hollow hinge wrangler. Draw another Nantuka Slicer. Card of Vengeance. That's a good card. Please don't have the Wandering Emperor. Alright, I'm going to concede in the interest of time. I don't think I can win anymore. Anyway, but the game's going to take a while. Uh, do I need to play more duresses? Probably. Farewell and the Eternal Wanderer are pretty hard to beat. I think I definitely misbuilt my deck having no cards that can kill a Planeswalker in the sideboard. There we go. I needed to draw a cheap play. Glessa certainly qualifies. Whoa, where'd the wedding announcement come from? I'm going to have to just try to fight through that farewell. I didn't want them to have wedding announcement in play. It would just be a constant stream of chump blockers for the, uh, the Glissa, which I think I'm going to need to get some cards out of. Speaking of constant stream of chump blockers... I get back my duress. Get rid of this farewell. Oh, I should have duress them pre combat. Don't hit me with the wandering emperor. I'm an idiot. I deserve, I deserve all the bad things that happened to me here. That was a terrible play. Truly My awful. However, is pretty nice. I'm just going to chain these slicers together. But actually, I'm going to take duress. And I guess I'll take this wedding announcement. I'm actually going to take the scry option just because I want to find the land. 
You don't see that all that often. Another wedding announcement, that's gonna be a problem. I have got new moves to teach you. Five five life linker, that thing is huge. Please don't kill my Titan of Industry. I need it. Please don't kill it. Remember your training. This all happened because I attacked into this wandering emperor like seven million turns ago. Second city stalker connoisseur, I don't think so. Ooh, antique collector, nice. Should I duress them? I don't think so. Might have actually been okay. I'm not sure what my plan to win is. When I built my deck, I thought my creatures would just be big enough that I wouldn't have a problem with winning like that, but... but staring at that 5-5 lifelink, I am actually concerned about how am I supposed to actually win this game? Can they actually blow anything up? They can blow up my blood token? Backup Antique Collector.
Oh, these things don't stack because it's a replacement ability. Lame. <laughs> Get a lot of clues here. I guess I want all these things in my deck. I probably don't want the Hollow Henge Wrangler in my deck. Or the Hag of... All these various Hags. something good. Land. Is land something good? Not really. Is it even worth doing? I guess. I'm gonna get a card from the wedding announcement. Well, you can't say that this hasn't been a strange game. It definitely has. Should I attack the Eternal Wanderer with my elephant? Doesn't really do anything. They can turn the ambitious farmhands into 3 3 life linkers. Ooh, that's a good draw. I'm gonna let the Herald of Vengeance hit me one more time though. This turn they need to put this stupid thing on me or I'm gonna eat it with the armored scrap gorger. Keep your eyes shut. 
How fast does this go off? And then if there are three or more counters, I've got a little bit of time. The Hourglass Coven, it's back. It's not the one that has the antique collector effect on it, though. I can't believe that this match is just going to end with my opponent running out of time. I think I've gotten to a spot where I'm very likely to win. Because next turn I can pod the Hourglass Coven into another Titan of Industry to get rid of Sinner's Judgment. And I'm actually decking them very quickly as well. What a match this has been. This video is going to be epic in length, if not in excitement. Wait, how did I go from 329 to 91% Mythic just by playing a super long match like that? I, I think maybe the ladder reset in the middle of that match. Or the season ended or something. On the play, one land. I'm gonna do it. Two lands, three lands even. I guess I'm getting rid of the Titan of Industry. And the idea that the Slicer's probably gonna do something before I would be getting to seven mana. Got a backup Slicer now as well. The interaction between having Slicers in my deck and having Scrap Gorgers is pretty awkward. Hopefully they'll solve my problem and just kill my Scrap Gorger for me, which is very nice of them. Now the Slicers are actually looking pretty strong. Next turn I'll be able to Slicer back a Scrap Gorger, and if I draw another land I can Slicer back a Scrap Gorger and a removal spell. I might be slicing back a Sun Slayer. I wonder if I should just have more slicers in my deck. They're so fun when they're good. City Stalker Sonosaur is just very good, but it's not really very fun. the question. Let me just go for the throat. I accept.
<laughs> I don't think this is getting the opponent to where they're hoping to get to. What they need is they need like two mana removal spell plus corpse appraiser here. Then they would get to start playing again. Crucius. Crucius is a very good card. And Viconia. Viconia is another problematic card for me. Just because it breaks up the slicer loop. I think they have undersimplify. I think I'm gonna find out. Usually in alchemy, people play un undersimplify over make disappear. Even if they, they make make disappear, it's not that bad for me. Gonna play the go for the throat in their upkeep, I think. I definitely wanna play it before I untap just because it it's my only two mana play. And the next turn I can do a like a four mana play and a three mana play. I don't wanna just waste two mana. But I don't wanna do it right now because they could easily have a two mana counter that would counter it. I want them to spend their mana on their turn. Never mind. I'll do it now, since I know it's going to resolve. Wow, they could be getting almost anything from my deck. I barely even know what cards are in my deck. They could get an Antique Collector here. They could get a Beside You Path Lighter. There's so many cards that my opponent would have to read if they took them. What do you think they got? I think they got a Beside You Path Lighter. That's their own copy of the Hourglass Coven. That's not that good for me. Which ones did they get? Discard and lose two life. I don't think they're going to block, but let's find out. Yeah. So I could double pod. I'm going to hit Junji. Junji can get me... I could just make them discard. And they lose some life. I'm going to be discarding and they're going to be draining me. And then I'm going to have my own hourglass coven. I think I'm fine with that.
It's an hourglass coven based face off. And an antique collector. All right, sure. I accept. Wait, they don't get the clue because it was going into my graveyard and it's my replacement effect? Weird. Very weird. Not gonna pay the kicker here. They should put this back in their deck because if they don't, I would, I'm going to go get it with Junji. I had no idea the Hourglass Coven was legendary. Doesn't really matter. I've achieved Hourglass Coven advantage. Do I have any more five drops in my deck? I don't think I do. Both my Junjis and my Hollow Hinge Wrangler. Or in the yard. Th this whole antique collector thing hasn't really borne out the way I thought it was going to. I have to say. I thought it would give my deck more like staying power than it does in practice. It kind of came up that one game, the second game against that white deck, but it's not going to matter here. I don't think this saves them. So I've got a lot of triggers. What, what are they doing? They can sack the the Razor Lash Transmogrant safely. Because that's a card that doesn't do anything. I think they have to be dead on board. So I'm going to invoke Despair. I'm going to take four and lose a blocker, and then I'm just going to Alpha Strike. They not have Fable and the Mirror Breaker in their deck, I think. Well, they didn't draw it. It'd be kind of crazy not to have it in your deck, but maybe they don't. Um, I think I want Cut Down, do I? Is it? It's good against Viconia, but I think I'd prefer to have Go for the Throat. 
Do I want a Viconia of my own? What does the green mode do on this? The creature's just bigger. I'm just going to have a duress. Natuka Slicer seems like it's got to be one of my best cards in, the, in this matchup. I'm happy to have drawn it. Also, I'm happy to draw the Hollow Hen Wrangler anytime I can. It's just a wonderful card to draw. I should probably have that Razor Lash Transmogrant card in my sideboard. It's good against Grixis. And it is a thing I could just keep potting away. It's going to be Crucius, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Braid my Scrap Gorger. They did that last game and it didn't work out very well for them. The only counters I saw were Bind to Secrecies, which don't hit creatures, right? So this is probably just going to resolve. Maybe they boarded in counters that hit creatures. My deck is a lot of just expensive creatures. That would be a good thing to board in if they had it. Invoke to spare down. Sp what? Spell Pierce was their most expensive guard? Wow. Their hand must be bad. Or it's just a lot of lands. Probably. I don't know, what, okay, Scavenger Grounds. I was about to say, I don't know what land they got, but I have to believe that whatever it is, they can't possibly have envisioned ever winding up with it in their hand when they constructed their deck. I want a Spell Pierce, not that badly. I guess I'm just gonna City Stalker and kind of swim them again. That time I got a bind to secrecy. I'm impressed with how many lands they've drawn. So if I draw a land, I can probably just, I'll probably just slice her back. Uh, my City Stalker kind of soar in there, bind to secrecy, and I think from that point it'll be pretty hard to lose. If I don't draw a land, I'll just play Hollow Henge Wrangler. Get a land. Oh, I miscounted. I guess I'm just playing Hollow Hunter Angle with this turn now. I need seven mana to slice her to bind a secrecy into my hand and leave it up. I should have played this before playing my land now because I can draw a tapped land. Well, I guess I don't have to play this as tapped because I'm on the draw, so my deck has no tapped lands in it, I think, at this point.
Oh, but now they have the scavenger grounds untapped. So the slicer isn't guaranteed to work. Maybe I was supposed to play the slicer the last turn because of that. It's hard to imagine that they're just going to be able to get by with doing nothing turn after turn. This, I still have enough mana to activate that. I guess I'll just play Antique Collector. For the Nambo of having my Hollow Hench Wrangler have this optional ability. It does make my, my spawning pod better for next turn. If I need it. They really drew a ton of lands. And somehow both of the cards they got off of Siphon Insight were effectively lands. One was a forest and then they got the path later that turned into a scavenger grounds. We're going with the shield counter. My life total is not in a precarious place. I'm just going to hold this land to either discard to a blood or to turn into a hollow hinge beast. Could I just do it right now? I could. Should I do it right now? Let's do it. One hollow hinge beast for me, please. I'd prefer a clue, as much as I enjoyed making the Hollow Hinge Beast. Alright, now... They finally tapped their Scavenger Grounds, but they're just gonna die. Alright, that deck was fun. I don't think that it was good, necessarily, but it was fun. There's probably better ways to build spawning pod decks. I think removing the Antique Collector... well... I don't think Antique Collector was that great. I think you probably should be a three-color deck. Although I don't know what the other color would be. White has some good options. You could play Elish Norn, AO, and Sanctuary Warden. Those are all good things. Maybe the best way to build the deck is to be base white black and only splash green for spawning pod because this is a you only need a single green mana for this card then you, you wouldn't play the scrap gorgers but that's not that great of a loss you wouldn't be able to play nantuka slicer which did win me a lot of matches but you could play other good stuff instead Anyway, that's going to be it for me for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope that this video at least showcased the uh, kind of some of the more fun aspects of alchemy, which if you made it this far, probably it's because you enjoy seeing the, the alchemy cards in action. If you didn't make it this far, then you're not hearing this, and that's too bad. So please leave a comment if you uh, want to see some more alchemy videos, if you got some good ideas for how to build a pod deck in alchemy or in historic, I'd be willing to give another crack at a pod deck. They're always fun to play. Thanks for watching. See you next time.